Oh, so uh, hello and welcome to the hustings, the position of um, Vice President of Access and Academic Affairs at the Oxford SU. I'm Caleb and Reinefelt. I'm a news editor at the Oxford Student, and I'm going to be hosting the hustings today. Um, so the way it's going to work is that we will have three rounds of questions um, relating to the position. Uh, the, the first question, um, candidates should have been told in advance, um, and so we'll be able to prepare for. And for that, uh, each candidate will have two minutes to answer the question. Um, for the subsequent questions, um, you will have one minute. Uh, now, I will be quite strict um, and will mute you after that time period has elapsed if you keep talking. Uh, it's just important um, to ensure that uh, the process is fair for all candidates. Um, so do you have any questions before we start? If not, we can begin. All right. Um, so I'm well in um, the first round. I'll start by asking uh, Jade and then Dominic. Uh, so Jade, um, what are um, what's the re what are the reasons why you are the best candidate for Vice President Access and Academic Affairs at the Oxford SU? I mean, could you tell us about what you can bring to the student union and what your main policy objectives are? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I have experience working on both access and academics as a student. Um, for instance, I've been class act co-chair for the last year. I've been on the campaign since first year. And uh, in second year, I was the undergraduate uh, co-president of the Historians Assembly. Um, and I came to Oxford as a low income first generation student determined to make a difference and not pull up the the, um, the, the rug behind me as I came in, I suppose. Um, so I definitely want to continue the work of Class Act in ensuring that students from socioeconomically disadvantaged backgrounds can thrive here without any financial barriers, particularly, um, for instance, equalise and destigmatise access to hardship funds and uh, promote financial support. Um, we should ensure that suspended students across all colleges have access to college libraries and spaces to study and socialise. We should explore an affordable reading week for undergraduates in order to um, relieve the stress of the workload. Um, I've also consulted with my friends who are international students, care leavers and graduate students in particular, and how to integrate their experiences into the remit of access. Um, for instance, I want to pioneer a scheme which directly targets care leavers to give them the support and guidance they need to apply to university. Uh, currently, only 12% of, of them do so, and less than 1% end up at Oxbridge. Graduate access is also inaccessible for many low income and first generation students. Um, and graduate students who are already enrolled are often left out of the situation. But we can provide more scholarships, we can provide more information to prospective applicants, and we can talk about the financial issues which many, particularly international postgrads, face. And on international it's students, if you're a low to average household income background, oh, is that it? OK, thank you very much. Um, um, just about the full two minutes. Um, so now I'll pass the same question um, on to Dominic. So Dominic, uh, why are you the best candidate for Vice President for Access and Academic Affairs of the Oxford Student Union? Tell us more about what you can bring to the Student Union and what your main policies are. Thank you. Uh, I think I'm best suited for this position uh, because I'm coming from like a very unique eclectic background. It, it's sort of ironic. I have done work in my previous institution in charity. I've done work with women's issues, domestic assault, abuse, uh, disability, raising awareness, fighting ableism, bringing things up to standard. I've also uh, had a hand in faculty tenure procedures, making sure that students have a voice in who represents them on the faculty and that they have the right teacher for the right job. Uh, some tabling and protesting and organizing events around tuition and also uh, general uh, matriculation issues. Uh, and I was particularly drawn to apply for this position and run for this position uh, because during COVID I know that I struggled uh, with accessing materials and academic matters during the pandemic. Uh, and now I want to take the moment we're in now to address those issues and kind of shore up weak spots uh, in the overall system. For one thing, uh, I want to draw closer ties with the union to the disability office. I was peeking around the site the other day and I noticed that the 
uh, availabilities for appointments hadn't been updated since last Trinity term. So I think having greater student involvement with that office would be prudent. Uh, I also want to do more overall tabling for the office, uh, for the Office of Access and Academic Affairs and those services they offer. Uh, mass flyering, uh, getting student volunteers involved for marketing, possible sweepstake incentives, or having a one-to-one -one partnership with uh, delegates and officers. Uh, and I'd also like to see a voluntary library buddy system for infirm students that can't make it to the Bodleian so that they can have uh, an interface to access materials when they're otherwise unable to do so. Well, thank you very much. And now we'll go on to the second question. Um, so uh, for this question, uh, the order will be reversed in the interest of fairness. And so um, Dominic will be up first. So Dominic, what do you think is, and uh, I think both candidates have touched on this already, the biggest barrier when it comes to accessible education at Oxford? I think the primary difficulty is honestly just communication. Uh, and I don't think that's any one fault of any institution or individual. Uh, I think it's a matter of mobilizing the wonderful resources we have, the student paper, student radio station, uh, trying to foster uh, collaboration between the larger colleges and the smaller colleges to work actively in tandem. Uh, and we live in a digital age with social media and so many tools at our disposal to draw those ties closer and to connect. And this holds true, I think, especially for our international students, our part-time students, and our graduate students, uh, and that greater efforts can and should be made to draw them into the greater fold uh, and connect them in particular to their undergraduate compatriots to have a more cohesive student body within all levels of the institution. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, Jade, you know, what do you think is the biggest barrier to accessible education at Oxford? I think it's dependent on who you are. I think international students generally, you face both um, an information barrier um, due to have you know dealing with a, an unknown foreign education system and application system, but you also have the incredible excessive uh, tuition fees, which are incredibly prohibitive. Like I said, particularly if you're not from a a very well off background and if you're not you have to take out very um very very prohibitive student loans um i think if you're from a state educated or first generation background for instance and you're a home student um it's definitely it's information and thinking is oxford really a place for me and i think that's where the importance of access initiatives come in um, I think also if you're an international, uh, not an inter sorry, a graduate student, um, there is so little support for graduate students financially. Um, yeah. Uh, thank you very much. And so now we'll return um, to the previous order, uh, which is Jade then Dominic for the final question. Um, so this question will be um, looking at a slightly more um, specific issue um, to look at how you would perhaps address the kind of problems that can be faced by um, the Vice President for the Student Union. So um, for a number of years, Oxford SC sabbatical officers have pledged to lobby the university for universal um, lecture capture. Um, but um, despite the continued efforts um, and a global pandemic, uh, this still hasn't been implemented by the university. So uh, Jade, how would you go about um, trying to lobby the university on an issue like that? OK, so I think first of all, we should do a review of which faculties um, do lecture cap capture better. And we should, um, I think it's quite well known for many campaigners why faculties don't want lecture capture ideas about intellectual property and so on and so forth. And the also the technical issues. I think we have to make the case that. So many um, barriers to accessibility which have existed COVID has shown how in, in that, that, that that we can overcome them if we have to and there's a, there's a necessity there and I think I think I think I get the sense that faculties are more amenable to being flexible and to reassessing ideas they previously had about pedagogical um, you know good practice and I think we're in a situation where we've seen what COVID can do yes it didn't make lecture capture perfect 
but we definitely made strides like many disability campaigners have made for years and we need to make that point and we need to make that point you know acknowledging why they you know gonna, why uh, yeah. bring that to a close thank you very much um, so i'll pose the same question to you um dominic so how would you go out um, approaching an issue like that lobbying the university I think from a similar vein, faculty involvement is definitely key. Uh, I think that large chain emails and signature campaigns would be another route. And in particular, I think bringing the student voice directly to higher administrative positions, looking at deans uh, and the sort of trustees that also weigh in on these matters and seeing how high up on the ladder we can bring petitions and signature campaigns and just sort of being a nuisance uh, to the people in power that maybe haven't been clued into the, this conversation that should be clued in this conversation that might be willing to assist and not only broadening to the current student network for this end but also reaching out to alumni uh, and seeing past students that might also be willing to be brought into the fold uh, to assist in a longer campaign to bring about greater uh, lecture accessibility. Well, thank you. That concludes the questions um, uh, that we have um, for the candidates for the position of Vice President of Access and Academic Affairs um, at the Student Union. Thank you very much um, to both of you for coming. Um, and that concludes the hustings. Uh, sorry, Jordan.